Okay, let's get started. Now, there are several ways to run multiple operating systems on one computer. You can partition a hard drive to boot up for multiple operating systems. You can use virtual software, or you can get a kit so you can swap out hard drives. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. Now, whichever one you decide to use will likely depend on your specific needs. This SATA drive switcher gives you another option. It allows you to have three independent drives in your computer and each drive will have its own independent operating system. You can select which drive you'd like to boot from by simply flipping a switch. Now this project doesn't require you to drill holes or do any kind of cutting on your computer, but you do have to have an empty drive bay. In order to build this project, you're going to have to know how to read a schematic and you're going to have to have some basic electronic assembly skills and know how to solder. Now as far as the mechanical goes, it's not likely you're going to have the same exact uh, chassis that I used. Uh, so what you're going to have to do is uh, make your own modifications, but the whole point here is to give you an idea as to what kind of things you can do. Uh, in order to get the electronics to fit inside your box. In my case, I decided to use a 3.5 inch floppy drive uh, for building this project. Uh, two main reasons. One was that I happened to have one lying around that was broken. And the other one is uh, I have uh, a bay in my computer for uh, that floppy drive. And since it's pretty much obsolete now, uh, I could use it for this. As you can see here, this particular chassis is one inch high, but the internal surface doesn't go quite to the top or the bottom. It's located somewhere in the middle, which doesn't give us much room for components or wiring on either side. That means we're gonna have to cut a hole on that inside surface. Fortunately, this is a pot metal casting and is relatively easy to cut. Just be careful and always wear safety goggles. I fashioned my front panel out of a piece of flat black plastic and I used black oxide screws to screw it onto the existing panel. But epoxy works just as well. Next, I drilled four holes in the chassis then I screwed in four aluminum threaded spacers and these are going to be used to mount the breadboard. Now cut and drill the breadboard so that it fits inside the chassis and it mounts to the four spacers. Also make sure you have clearances for the switch and the LEDs. So now you're pretty much ready to assemble the unit putting in the parts wiring it and soldering it. You could do it while it's put together like this or you can take it apart and then put in your electronic parts and then reassemble it. It's whatever works best for you. Oh one more thing. 
This chassis had an existing hole in the back, so what I did was I enlarged it, and because the casting has a fairly substantial thickness, I was able to file and sand the hole smooth. That way it won't cut into the wires going through it. Here's the schematic. It's fairly straightforward, and if you would like a copy of it, at the end of this video, there's a listing that tells you where you can download it. This is the finished unit. The relays I used were too tall, so I was not able to mount them directly into the breadboard. Instead, I had to lay them on their sides and strap them down with cable ties. Finally, just to make sure component and wire leads don't short out to the cover, I cut a piece of mylar film and epoxied it on the inside of the cover. Well, that should do it. Uh, you should be able to figure out the rest of it and install it in your system on your own. By all means, before you put it in your computer, test it. Use an external power supply and a multimeter to make sure that it's working properly. Good luck and thank you for watching.